Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ray Pastor, and today I'm going to talk about VO2 max, and I'm going to specifically compare and talk about some differences between Garmin and Apple's VO2 max. All right, so first, what is VO2 max? I'm not going to go through really what is on this whole slide, but basically the idea is that VO2 max is the maximum rate of oxygen consumption measured during exercise. Um, a lot of organizations, and you can read this here from Wikipedia, like the American Heart Association, recommend people, especially if you're involved in fitness, calculating your VO2 max to get an idea of how fit you are. Um, you can go through and read this, pause this, and read, go through and read this. But at the bottom here, I have a statistic, um, two studies. One was done by Wearable in 2017, where they compared uh, Fitbit, Garmin, and Pebble watches to see which had the most accurate VO2 max, and Garmin was found to be the most accurate. However, uh, probably a better study done by Runner's World um, compared a number of the devices as well and found them all to be pretty inaccurate. Um, sometimes they would actually be too high, sometimes they would be too low um, by about four or five points. And we'll talk a little bit about inconsistencies as I go to the next screen. Um, so, there. All right, so here's what it looks like. So this is VO2 max on the left and right. Um, and these aren't my statistics here either. Okay, so on the left we have Garmin's. Um, you can see how Garmin estimates VO2 max. They have a nice big number, basically red, uh, orange, green, blue, and purple, and that kind of tells you where you are. Obviously green is good, you know, and purple is the best. Red is dangerous. Um, and you can see on the top they have a chart where they estimate what your VO2 max is. Um, they also, this is something I like about what Garmin does, is they give you a fitness age recommendation, so it tells you where you are in your age and gender, um, and kind of what your fitness age is. And actually, this is what Garmin tells me my VO2 max is. It says it's about 46 to 48. It tells me my fitness age is that of a 20-year-old, even though I'm double that age, and it tells me I'm in about the top 25 to 30% of my gender. All right, on the right, we have apples. Apples is very similar. Um, it gives you a number. You can see the number here is 52, and then it gives you your data points up top where you can chart it out. Um, and they can tell you how many have been registered for the week or day or whatever. Um, and it does tell you in each of these apps, if you click help here or scroll down in apples, it'll tell you what the, the numbers actually mean. So they do tell you what they mean. But Garmin does a little better job of just showing whether it's good or not right on the main screen. But essentially, they're telling you the exact same thing. All right, so differences I've noted. I've noticed personally that Apple's is always about two to three points higher than Garmin's on me for some reason. Um, now, which is more correct? We don't know because I haven't went into a lab and worn both of them, tested it, and also worn the oxygen mask, the sensors, and the treadmill test. Um, however, what I will say is the most important thing about VO2 max is not what this says your number is. I think these are good estimates, probably, you know, a plus or five, plus or minus five of what it really is. What's important is that you see what your VO2 max is today, and then in three months from now, you see what it is. Has it went up or down? Because what you're really looking for here is that trend. Am I improving or not? Um, the other thing to pay attention to is when you first get one of these devices, it's going to change in the first month a lot um, because what happens is the more you run or walk and calculate it, the more it changes. So it might start at 50 and then go down to like 43 or vice versa. It might start at 43 and go up to 50. So that first month is really a guess or check by the device trying to get to pinpoint what your VO2 max is um, based on their algorithm. So, you know, don't pay too much attention to it those first few weeks that you're using it, you know, for your first like 20 runs or whatever. Um, but then, you know, three months out, start to look, six months out, what are the trends, what's happening? That's the important data that you're going to look at on this. Um, and also, I wanted to point out, you know, I've seen a lot of tests comparing heart rate between Apple and Garmin devices, and I have noticed that they're both very similar um, because chest straps are known to have the most accurate VO2 max. So I think that the newer sensors on both of the new, new Garmin's, like Vivo Sport and up, and the new Apple Watch 3, I think should have a pretty, should be pretty accurate compared to the chest straps for heart rate, which will give you a more accurate VO2 max. All right, next screen. How do I actually detect this? How do I detect VO2 max on these devices? Okay, on Garmin, you have to run outside. You have to run or walk outside for 15 minutes. You have to be calculating your run or walk using GPS. 
That's how you get the statistics on Garmin. On Apple, you can see I, on the left here, I just have, I've written down what's in the Garmin manuals. And this is what's actually on Apple's app. And you can read it here. But basically what it says for Apple is you need to do a 20 minute run or walk using the GPS. So outside run as well. And you have to use Apple's workout app. So if you're using like any of the third party apps from Apple, it's not going to calculate your VO2 max. I think that's a really big downfall of um, I think Apple needs to somehow fix that and see if these apps can calculate it themselves, have their own algorithm. I don't know if they do or not. Every All of them are different. Um, so, you know, in Apple, you can only do it kind of using their app. Um, 15 versus 20 minutes. Personally, I think that good tests of VO2 max are either like a certain length of time, like a good 30 minute run or saying how fast can you run a two mile run? Um, I wish that either of them would have, like, I'm going to run two miles. Let's see how fast that is to calculate VO2 max. Neither of them do. They only go by time. Um, and I think by time, I rather would see higher number runs, like a 30-minute run. Um, but anyway, that's how they each do it. And that's it. Thank you.